All right, I've tasked myself with the challenge to record studio quality drums on the cheapest budget possible. Let's dive in. So realistically, not everybody can afford great gear. Um, I've been fortunate enough to acquire a bunch of this gear. I've got great friends who have gear on loaner to me. This entire investment has been years in the making. I remember when I first got started having my single rack interface that had the built-in microphone pre's and then just a cheap set of mics. Um, so I no longer have any of that stuff, but I did go online and found some cheap microphones and a cheap interface all used for under a thousand dollars. So let me break it down for you. First microphone is the kick mic, Beta 52 I found on Reverb, $120. Next, snare top, SE Electronics V7, $77. Snare bottom, a V7X, $78. A Shure SM57 for the hi-hat, $65. Bucks. Two Sennheiser 604s for $196 for the toms. For overheads, a pair of SE7s from SE Electronics, $150. That's a steal in my book. Um, on Facebook Marketplace, I found a Behringer eight channel interface with microphone pre's built in, $175. I would say the XLRs, mic stands, people probably have them laying around. I would include that with things that you already have, like your computer, your headphones, um, your drum kit. What I'm also going to do in this challenge, experiment, whatever you want to call it, is only mix with stock Pro Tools plugins. So all in all, without the XLRs and the mic stands, it's under $1,000. All right, I've got all of these new mics on the drum kit, and um, now we're gonna open up Pro Tools. I'm gonna go ahead and create eight new tracks. And it looks like they're already routed one-to-one, -one, so I'm just gonna rename. And now I'm going to record enable and let's start getting some gains. So there's nothing really on the Behringer to indicate what my gain is other than a clip light. So I'm just gonna monitor off of the Pro Tools levels. All right, that sounds pretty good. So let's go ahead and import our song and play along. I've got Pro Tools open. I've got this uh, session that I just cut on now here in front of me. And looking at these waveforms, everything looks pretty normal, pretty good. So let's go in here and check some phasing. So generally what I like to see is the waveform starting up, you know, like a sine wave. So I'm just going to put this thing on and invert the phase for anything 
that isn't like that, and then I'm going to render it. Okay. Now it looks like everything is in phase. So let's do a little bit more housekeeping before we even listen to the thing. And I'll time lapse this if this doesn't make any sense or isn't cool. So total disclaimer here, I truly don't know what I'm doing or what I expect to make of this. Uh, it could be great, it could suck. I haven't done this at all before, so this is literally just me hearing all of this for the first time. Okay, well, first thing I noticed, my pocket is pretty wonky, but we don't need to comment on that. Let's just start off with the kick. Have a listen. Yeah, it just sounds like it's all of that, like 1.5. Okay. I wish there was a way to solo some of these frequencies. I mean, that at least does some very basic cleaning. All right, here's snare top. This doesn't actually sound that bad to me. Like I, I, I can, uh, I don't hate it. It's definitely a better starting spot than the kick in my humble opinion. Yeah, it seems like the snare is just missing a little bit of low end, but I feel good about that starting place. Let's hear the bottom. All 
All right, I'm not gonna fuss with that right now. Let's just see what these sound like together. Okay, maybe I will fuss with it. Let's hear the hi hat. Toms are a nice surprise. That sounds good. Okay, my theory is I'm, I'm just taking away a little bit of that weird attack in there, but I, I'm confident we're gonna get it back once we start adding layers of compression. I'm hearing a little bit more attack on the floor tom. Okay. And then we'll do some panning. And then everything in but the overheads. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, it's not bad. OK, that's cool. All right, let's hear these overheads. These actually sound really nice. They um, position wise feel like they keep the kick and the snare in the center and they have pretty good space of the whole kit. Um, I treat my overheads like a full drum kit capture, not just cymbal mics. So that's why I don't do too much um, high pass on them because I like to hear a little bit of that low end information. So let's see where we're at so far with everything in. Yeah, I just hate the kick. Poop city.
right, so what else comes, I think this comes with Pro Tools now. feels better. Let's put this same thing on the snare. I'll leave space just in case I need to add another EQ. So just enough to let the attack through, but I'd like it to release faster. Yeah, it kind of extends the entire tone. This floor tom, though, kind of had some of that like basketball tone. All right, for the overheads, I really like to squash them. So we'll go to town with this compressor again. Yeah, still just not loving the kick, but we'll get there. All right, let's try some uh, let's try some drum bus compression. I just don't think I don't remember what else Pro Tools comes with in terms of plugins. Is it just 
these three. All right, for the parallel bus, I like to really squash it. Maybe let's see what uh, what this guy would do. I think I like that as much as something like this. Yeah, that feels pretty good. It kind of feels a little pumpy. Maybe I can ease up on these toms a little bit. Something in there that's kind of strange. Doom. Just throughout the whole kit.
that sounds like with the music. I do want all of this to go through like a mix bus. Okay, now that I hear it with the track, I do think the drums could afford to have some sort of room verb plug-in type thing. So let's have a listen to what we can make here with D-verb, which I actually don't hate. So let's go ahead and just start on a small room. Yeah, I like that. That actually adds some good character to the snare. Still hate the kick.
let's hear this in context. I don't know. That does not sound awful to me. But the last thing that I would do to glue the track and the drums together would be one more compressor. It can be super soft, super light, super slow. And let's see what this does. That seems really nice to me. But let's, so let's see how it uh, compares to all of my gear and all of my favorite microphones, which include a V-Kick on the kick in, a Mic Tech C7E on kick out, snare top SE8, snare, uh, snare top V7, the condenser and the dynamic. Snare bottom is an SE8. The hat is an AKG 451. The toms are AKG 414s. The overheads were Mike Tech C5s. The close rooms were Cole's 4038s. And the far rooms are KSM 131s or 141s. I think the biggest difference here will be the room sound, which I would argue could make or break a mix. Um, the kick is going to be better here. So yeah, let's have a listen. So much more punch. It just gives the drums so much dimension, so much character. I think what I was missing in the other session were some of these plugins as well, like like this kind of SSL G bus kind of compressor. Like this is just really nice on these rooms. You know, obviously coming in through all of this gear over here with EQs and compressors. Nothing fancy, but it just cleans up the initial signal before it even gets into Pro Tools. And then to have something like an API 2500 on your drum bus, and then your parallel bus is this. Then coming down here, um, a final thing on the drum bus is this um, CLA mix down thing. All I do is just engage everything. I don't really fuck with it. But finally, more compression. Maybe two to three dB there. And then the limiter. I mean, it's pretty loud to begin with. Um, so I really don't have to take much off. 
or any at all. Yeah, that same thing, it looks like two to three dB. But yeah, if I was mixing that other session with all of my plugins, I feel like I could get it pretty close. So maybe that's the next video. Give that a go. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna leave you with a combination mix of both. And uh, I hope this was worthwhile. This was really fun to do. Thanks for enduring this long video. I'll see you in the next one.